It's a wild ride. First, the markets are struggling, then Wall Street is going up, especially the tech stocks are seeing a roller coaster ride. So where are the US markets heading? This is the IG Trading Talk and I'm Manuel Koch. And joining me now from New York City, it's the legendary Einstein of Wall Street, Peter Tuckman. Peter, so good to see you. Thanks for having me. It's good to be see you too. Peter, uh, what do you make out of all these news? Markets are first losing a lot, then going up again, especially the, the tech stocks are struggling. Is uh, there something wrong with the markets or is it just a healthy correction, what we saw before? Historically, in the past, when a market goes up or down, recession or inflation or, or, or a depression, or you've got a rally and a bull in a bear market, you know, when these things continue, to play out their hand for days and weeks and months at a time, then we can give it a, a title, you know? But I don't think, uh, I think the title for this is yes, a roller coaster, but I would not put anything more, uh, I would not call it a correction by any means. In a market that is up 50, 60% from the uh, March lows, for it to go down 2,000 points is really just a little, a little bump in the road to be perfectly honest. Especially the, talk, the, the tech stocks were in the news. Is this an opportunity for investors to maybe go shopping a little bit cheaper than before? I think we need to talk about the fact that we've got a bit of a, a, a short squeeze in the market, right? Let's dip into the fact that a couple of, um, a week or so ago, we saw the split of uh, Tesla, and we saw the split of Apple, the two big um, tech high flyers. And while that always has an oh, interesting effect on the stock, net net at the end of the day, it doesn't really change the valuation of the stock. It just splits. People should read up on what it actually means when stocks split because they're fascinating. But what ends up happening is you have stocks that are the major high flyers in the tech industry that have been up huge double digit percentages and there is a huge uh, short interest on tesla and on apple right so what does that mean in order for people to have a short position they need to borrow stock when a stock splits four to four to one these people are being forced to cover the stock that they are short to buy back that stock to be able to renegotiate their short position and that's caused another strong rally into a split of Tesla and Apple. So these are so many multi, multi, you know, and we have the election coming up. It's 50 some days away. There's so many things as you and I, when we speak each week, we've seen so many different reasons over the last number of months, why the market is up, even though it's very curious and why the market should be down, though I don't wish anything negative on the market, but surely the rally in the tech sector may be coming to a bit of a close out here. You know, as we're coming to the year end, people are taking some profits. You know, people are, um, are you know, are, are, are anxious about um, what's, what's really going to happen with the election. And so I think you're going to see money shifting around. You're going to see these big swath rallies. You're going to see the market sell off a couple thousand points as we've seen over the last week. You made so many interesting points. Um, maybe let's talk one more time about the tech stocks. Do you think there is an opportunity to buy right now cheaper than before, or are they already like in a very like record level territory? Well, you know, look, I, you know me. I mean, my disclaimer is I cannot tell you what to buy, when to buy it, and I can't advise you on your money. But all I can do is try and explain to you why stocks do what they do and why they are trading at the levels that they're trading at, okay? So we've seen Apple and we've seen trading at high levels, which is a little bit out of range for most investors, right? We're talking stocks in the high hundreds and stocks in the thousands, right? You know, and a lot of these stocks, people would love from putting that in their portfolio. That's changed a little bit recently because you're actually able to fractionally invest. But what, when you have Apple stock trading at five, $450 
and uh, for a normal investor who's not fractionally investing. And somebody does not really want to buy a partial uh, bit of stock and they want to have a nice little position in Apple. Perhaps, yes, the price of a, so with Apple's trading at $400 and they split four for one, you're going to start, the stock will now be trading at $100. So while net is the same, the psychology of it is that people believe that this is a time to get back into the stock. And perhaps it is. But what I said to you is sort of counterintuitive. If you split a stock four for one, there will be more shares outstanding. That should put some sell pressure on the stock. But what I just described to you why Tesla and Apple have rallied into the is a massive short position in the investment community and people having to cover their short to reposition their shorts. This whole volatility we see, is this a good moment also for like short term traders to go into the markets when it's going up and down? Is this a good moment? It's important to know in answer to your question. Yes, this is a wonderful time for people to trade, invest and get into the market. But it is a very bad time to do it without the guidance of an advisor, which I am not, and a day trading teacher, which I am not, and all those things before one is a veteran trader to get in the market, one can really be poor, badly hurt. As we've seen, you know, one of the biggest contributing factors to the huge volatility and the volume in the market over the last six months has been the influx of the retail trader. That means that people are sheltered at home. People have lost their jobs. Many people are taking control of their money and trading the market. And many people are being hurt badly, right? Because you're seeing stocks move. You've seen the markets per se move one, two, three percent in, in a moment, right? Markets can be up 500 points and, and down 600 points in five, six minutes. So I beg people before they get involved in this wild, crazy volatile market to do their homework to get and to seek out before they lose their money. Peter, you already mentioned the US elections coming up in November. My opinion is until we see the election, the markets will still go up. What do you think? Is this uh, maybe a good time to, to go into the markets? Well, let's be clear. Uh, we, We, never before have we had a pandemic and a economic and a health crisis like we've seen over the last six months. It's unheard of. And all these things are going to play into what happens in the election and how it moves going forward. And so we've seen a, um, these are unprecedented moves. This is an unprecedented election. There is so much stuff going on between whether there's Russian involvement or China, how pushing uh, stimulus in the market and not as much on the economy, what it means to have 40 million people unemployed, who, who, who is going to vote for who, right? It appears that Mr. Trump has a very strong no matter what he does. And then there are the other people who are really wishing for a change that what they've seen over the last four years in a, in a president is very distressing. And all of these things never before have had such a huge, because let's be clear, Mr. Trump came in to, uh, to the presidency as a businessman. Whether he's a good one or a bad one, I'm not going to say, but he did have his roots in business so that he is somebody who's been watching the market and is running his uh, campaign on the market being you, that he's going to do everything in his power to keep the market up until the election. What happens after that, I'm not sure about, but I agree with you that it is, a, it, it, or, or it, it is very important to this, to the Trump administration, that the Dow Jones Industrial Average stays strong into it because a lot of his, even though I don't believe a lot of his supporters are in the marketplace because that's not the economic uh, um, breakdown of his, of his supporters. Peter Tuckman, the Einstein of Wall Street. Peter, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. It's always a pleasure. Good to see you guys. And thank you guys for watching. This was the IG Trading Talk. I'm Manuel Koch. For more information, go on IG.com. See you next time.